Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam from Spirited Systems and today we're gonna to do a home defense kit shakedown. So whenever we're considering equipment for home defense, we really have to look at all the scenarios that we're gonna find ourselves in and we are going to have to select kit based off of those scenarios. Uh, what I'm seeing a lot of right now in the community is guys are, they're looking for information and they're finding you know, either this like special operations spectrum or then now kind of the fad right now is the infantry or reconnaissance side of things. And guys are selecting, their, you know, making kit choices off of that. Uh, but we really have to take those scenarios and we have to digest them and understand what we actually need. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is actually the weapon. Uh, for me, this is one of the most important parts uh, in the home defense setup you really have to make uh, some decisions based on your environment, your home environment, how big your house is, how many people you have living in your house, uh, do you have children, are there you know, things like sound requirements, things like that. You really have to understand uh, you know, what weapon you're going to select and why. Uh, I recommend some kind of AR setup. Uh, this is a SIG uh, Rattler and 300 Blackout. Uh, and I, I picked that because it gives me a little bit of a ballistic advantage. It allows me to make the gun very short and still be suppressed. Uh, and you know, I recommend this because it's the first thing that you're gonna grab. Uh, it is very, very easy to uh, make low percentage shots with a carbine versus a pistol. Uh, you can mount uh, very bright flashlights. It just gives you a lot of advantages with optics, sound suppression, all of that, and still a very small, uh, pretty lightweight package. But this also enables me to flex outside of the home or you know, if it's a, if it's a neighborhood type situation, it gives me options uh, both in and out of the home. So the way I see it is that this is the first thing that you're gonna grab uh, and we have to make decisions based on the time that things are happening, right? So you hear people outside and you're, you know, you're not asleep is a different scenario than if you were woken up and startled in the middle of the night by somebody breaking and entering into your home. So that's gonna affect how you make decisions, but this is gonna be the first thing you grab. So it needs to have the ability to uh, do everything you need basically on the weapon. Uh, so flashlights are super important because you may not have time to uh, you know, grab your helmet, grab your night vision, all of those things. Working up from there, we have the kit. And the kit can be debated. Uh, everybody debates it, the size, should I have an LBE, should I have a plate carrier, should I have a chest rig, should I have a belt kit, whatever it is. Uh, I've chosen to go with a Microfight chest rig. This is a Mark V, so this is our new chassis, uh, and I've been using this one for a while for this role. And the reason why I went this way is because it enables me to carry enough stuff, but not have so much stuff that I'm not gonna grab it or I'm not gonna have time to put it on. It really is trying to find that balance between what might you need and what will you actually need. And uh, we have to be really honest with ourselves and look at you know, the equipment and you know, what we actually need. So I'm not going to be sustaining a fight inside of my house uh, most likely, right? The most likely scenario is that somebody breaks into my home, gets in between me and my family or whatever the case may be there, and I have to uh, defend that and it's gonna be a very short engagement. Uh, you can see I have three full magazines. That's like old habits die hard. I just can't let myself go below three. But uh, honestly, realistically, two is probably enough. But so I have two loaded into the kit here uh, and I have one in the gun. So that's what I have for ammunition. And again, it's all rifle based because I don't plan on jocking up with a pistol and a rifle by the time uh, you by the time this has happened, by the time you've gotten all your gear on, you would have already had to confront somebody. So again, most likely you're just going to be grabbing the weapon, but if you have time, you're going to be grabbing this. Another reason that I, I uh, use a chest rig versus a plate carrier or an LBE or something like that, um, a plate carrier is going to take too long to get on. Uh, an LBE is just too much stuff, most likely. Uh, it can, you can do it. It can work. But for me, I have the you know, ability to have something like this. I like the chest rig because if I do have to don it, say there's something going on, rioting, civil unrest in the neighborhood, uh, and we're thinking about that bigger problem, I can grab this, I can put it on, I can grab an, like you know my assault pack, have some food and water, things like that, and be comfortable carrying my kit around and have enough stuff 
to take the fight outside if I needed to. Um, but also in my home, if I do have the time, I can just throw this over my shoulder, grab my rifle, and then move to where I need to go, and it's no big deal. So that's one of the reasons I've selected a chest rig is because you can uh, treat it as more of a sling. You can also take the back strap off of this uh, and you can put it on the where the shoulder strap goes and make just kind of a sling out of that. Um, so talked about magazines. We talked about kind of why a chest rig. Uh, I like this one. It's low profile, it's small, easy to grab. I also have a uh, flashbang in here as well. Uh, and the reason why I have that is for, I mean, there's obvious reasons of diversion. So if there's somebody in the house, I can hear them. I don't really know where they are. I can throw this. I can divert them. I can confuse them. Uh, but also a, a bigger point is de-escalation. So I think with all of the stuff that we're showing right now, it's, it's the ability to do violence to protect yourself or protect your family. But I also always consider de-escalation as something that if I can utilize a tool to de-escalate the situation and you know, not have to be violent, then I will. So the flashbang is a great way. Uh, most people are not uh, conditioned to deal with a flashbang being thrown at them. It's very scary, it's very loud, uh, and it's, it's proven to de-escalate situations for law enforcement. It'll also work for uh, civilians as well. So if you, these are available on a lot of uh, airsoft kind of you know, uh, websites and stuff like this. This one specifically is, is uh, an FBG-6 flashbang with a two second delay on it. Uh, they are quite loud. So I keep one of those. Again, de-escalation is, is the name of the game there. Uh, in the sack pouch down below, I have a full IFAC. So this is what you, know, what you would find in any of our uh, IFAC kits that we sell. Uh, that's a full IFAC, a pair of shears, and then I also have a tourniquet on the side. Again, this is minimal stuff. And, and I'm thinking about uh, post-event, right? That's where we start getting into medical stuff. Somebody break, you know, breaks into your home, there's an altercation, you get hurt, they get hurt, a family member gets hurt. Uh, you're gonna then switch over once you know, you've settled the situation, you're gonna switch over and render aid. Uh, that, so it's important to have that stuff with you. It shouldn't be stuffed in a drawer somewhere. It shouldn't be out in your car. It needs to be on your person or, or somewhere where you know where you can just grab it and go with it. So med equipment, just as important as your, your fighting equipment. So I always keep that there uh, as well. Uh, and then two items on here that maybe uh, are not as familiar for like a home defense situation, uh, but I always keep these two items with me anyways. Uh, so I, I threw them on here too. It's just electrical tape, nothing fancy, but there's always the opportunity to uh, hold something down or tape something or whatever. So I always keep a little bit there. It costs nothing on weight really, and it's, it's just very convenient and useful. And then I also have uh, one of these, uh, they're called Marcos. This is from Blue Force Gear. Uh, it is a magazine shaped mini chem light dispenser, essentially. So I got this because I wanted a way to store chem lights long term, but have them accessible where I can just rip a package open and then I can dispense as many as I need. Uh, and this, you know, the home defense scenario, we're talking about like inside the home, typical, you know, FBI statistic, home invasion, violent crime stuff. Guys come in, a guy comes in, he's trying to rob you, whatever, whatever's going on, you have to use violence. Maybe not gonna really need that. But when we start talking about moving our bubble out to our neighborhood and our neighborhood defense and having people in your neighborhood that you can rely on, uh, signaling becomes very important. So that's why I have those on there. Uh, you can also use this um, as a way to communicate with first responders, right? You've called, you've called the police, they're coming. Uh, you can use the, the green chem lights to mark things or whatever color you get to mark things. And you can tell the dispatcher, hey, I've, I've laid green chem lights in this, you know, this area of the house, this is where my family is, this is where somebody else is, this, you know, whatever. You can just use it as a way to communicate visually with uh, people around you. So I keep them on there. Again, doesn't really cost anything to have them, uh, but if you don't have them and you need them, you're gonna regret not having them. So another thing I carry on my kit is uh, this ASP flex cuff right here. So it's made by the company ASP and it is a, uh, it's just a very convenient flex cuff system. You just pull these guys. It's a very good way to uh, put somebody under control, which is, uh, is a consideration that you have to have if you are uh, 
you know, if somebody's invading your home and you're de you've been able to de-escalate it, now you need to control that person. So I really recommend having a way, it doesn't have to be these, it could be handcuffs, it could be something else, but you need a way to put that person under control until uh, you know, the authorities can arrive and take care of it. And again, pe put people under control, de-escalate the situation. That's kind of the theme of, of my philosophy for home defense. Uh, you know, use, use the tools you have, but try to, try to have a peaceful outcome. Um, so this is my helmet. Uh, this, this is one of my helmets, I should say. Uh, not everybody has uh, the privilege of having multiple helmet setups. I do. Uh, this is an ops core, uh, and it's a, a fully ballistic helmet. I have hearing protection. I have uh, an axe-mounted Surefire light on it, uh, my, my strobe, and my night vision. And this helmet looks like pretty much every helmet that you see uh, anywhere else, you know, on, on the battlefield, law enforcement, wherever. Uh, this, is, this is probably the biggest advantage that I have over someone who uh, might be, you know, invading my home. Uh, the, the ability to see in, in complete darkness when somebody else may not be able to uh, is, is a huge advantage. The disadvantage to a helmet uh, in a night vision setup is that it simply it just takes too much time. So again, you have to think about the scenario at hand. Guy smashes the window, you wake up startled in the night, you're grabbing this uh, and you're using your flashlight. At least I am. That's, that's the course of action I'm going to take. I'm going to grab this and this is probably all I'm going to have time to grab. Uh, I want to get to you know, that threat and try to de-escalate or you know, control that threat as quickly as I can before they get a lay of the land, get into you know, my kid's room or something. I want to have them uh, at gunpoint as soon as I can. So I'm just grabbing this. But in the scenario where you have time, where there's any kind of indicator that something's happening uh, and you can, you, you, know, you can get to your equipment, uh, you definitely want to put your helmet on, you want to put your chest rig on, you want to be fully ready, have your night vision, have your lasers turned on. All that stuff takes time uh, and time may, just may not be something that you have. And you may not have access to night vision or, or any of that and that's fine too. A flashlight is going to do 99% of the work in one of these scenarios. It's a, it's a completely good tool. Uh, an AR-15, 5.56 with just a flashlight and a red dot, you are far better off than most people are to handle some kind of situation. So that's my kit, that's, that's what I have set up. Uh, we'd actually love to hear from you guys in the comments, kind of just do a basic loadout, maybe things I've missed, maybe there's always good ideas that I get from you guys in the community too. So we appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next uh, Kit Shakedown.